What's going on, guys? This is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Welcome back to the second installment of our advanced series. Okay, so the aspect of Fortnite that we're going to be talking about in this series are fundamental aspects of play for the top players in the game. Throughout the next couple of weeks, we're going to be breaking down every specific aspect of Fortnite that is essential to getting to the highest level. So today, we're going to be exploring everything that we need to know about early game in competitive Fortnite. You guys ready? The fundamentals that we're going to be introducing in these series are complex and sometimes challenging to master. So we recognize this and that's why ProGuys.com has the best coaches to help you master each of these skills. Make sure to check out our pro coaching service as well as our new VOD review system to get better quickly. Link can be found below. So a major part of mastering early game is getting yourself as much information as possible before you can even touch the ground. When you first load into a game, you sit in a pregame lobby that shows you the upcoming bus route, right? As discussed in the pre-tournament installment of this advanced series, it is best to go into a tournament with a singular landing spot. So the first thing that you should do once loading into the pre-game lobby is really to figure out when you need to drop out of the bus. For example, like if your landing spot is Slurpee Swamp, <laughs> That's mine. And the bus route is going from the west to east. You will need to drop out of the bus a lot sooner than someone landing at, you know, retail row. So it's extremely important to not scuff your drop in these tournament games. So after you've exited the bus, all right, your work begins, right? While gliding, there are a couple of things that you need to be looking out for. All right, get this. The first thing you should be looking for is if you're getting contested directly at your landing spot. Is anyone landing at your building or chest? Is anyone landing directly next to you? Is anyone landing on your side of your POI? These are all questions that you should be asking yourself before landing. So the next thing to consider is if anyone can disrupt or cut off your loop path. For example, if you land the east side of Misty Meadows and an opponent also lands east side, at what house could he cut off your loot? This should also be considered before you even land. So the last thing you should be considering before you even touch the ground, my friends, is what surrounding opponents outside of your loot path could influence your rotate. For example, like if you land the west side of Misty Meadows and usually use the rips outside of the Panther to just rotate into the first zone, it is essential that you know like if anyone is landing Disco or Cabins or at the Panther Zone. So this information could directly affect your first rotate and the rest of your entire game. So it's so important to gather every single game. I want to reiterate this, like all of these things are aspects of the game that you must consider before you even touch the ground. So you've landed. All right, what's next? All the information that you gathered before you landed now needs to be implemented into the game. There are no, you know, two identical situations in Fortnite. In other words, each situation is unique to that game at that time. And this is why your pre-drop information is so important. For example, like if you land at Holly Hills and typically loot for a long time and use rips to rotate, but you see that someone is landing at the big dog house, you would have to spend less time looting and rotate earlier knowing that they will most likely be using the rips. Another example of implementing your pre-drop information would be if you land on the east side of Misty Meadows and an opponent lands on the west side. You would want to land closest to the bridge and just loot away from your opponent to make sure your loot path doesn't get cut off. Since no two early game scenarios will be identical, right? It's important to base your loot path and first zone rotation evaluations based on the information you gathered before you land, not after, okay? Now that you've done your pre-landing evaluation, you've landed and have a general understanding of how you need to play up until the second zone, all right, let's break down exactly how you should be executing your loop path. Who's ready for this? After you ensure your loop path isn't going to get cut off, there are another two things that you need to master to perfect your early game play. Here we go. The first skill, <laughs> It's speed. Yeah, speed. Ideally, you want to practice your loop path before your tournament, as discussed, you know, in last week's installment. But this is still very much applicable while in tournaments as well. Like regardless of how far or close your first rotation is, maintaining an efficient speed throughout looting is extremely important to setting yourself up later on in the game. With the 100% chest spawn rate getting taken out this season, your ability to loot as many chests as possible <laughs> is ever more important. So the faster you are looting, the more chests you're going to get to. All right, so the second skill that you need to master is how you're going to get your ideal inventory every single game. What inventory you choose doesn't particularly matter, but a majority of the time, you either carry double movement or double heals. Either way, your goal stays the same. Your loot path needs to be able to get you your ideal inventory every single game in a relatively quick manner. So in order to give yourself the best possible chance at getting your ideal inventory is to loot as many chests as possible. The only way to do this is to be efficient. 
So after you have successfully landed and looted up, you are ready to rotate. All right, if you have properly completed your pre-drop tasks, your first rotation should be pretty straightforward and simple. If you're watching this video, guys, you most likely know what dead side of the zone is. For anyone who doesn't, dead side is the quadrant or zone that has the least amount of players in it or the least amount of players that are going to rotate into. Getting to the lowest density or dead side of a zone is the most important thing to do when rotating into the first zone simply because it's going to set you up for early rotations into future zones. You should be able to identify which part of the zone is going to be dead side well before the first zone starts to close. Generally speaking, like it will play to a top corner of the map depending on the zone. How you get to the dead side will depend on the map mobility, including boats, cars or rifts around you, as well as how far you need to go. The mobility around where you land will be a deciding factor on when you need to leave your drop or, you know, how far you have to rotate and overall how difficult it is to get to dead side. If you land in the middle of the map, you will pretty much never pull dead side, but will also have a manageable rotate. If you land around the edge of the map, all right, you will sometimes get dead side, but run the risk of just having max distance rotates to certain zones and certain games. And, you know, after you get to dead side of the first zone, you're going to be ready to play mid game. So now for the wonderful recap. All right, firstly, do your pre-drop preparations, my friends. You need to gather as much info about your surroundings as you can to give yourself the best chance of making it out of early game. Second, know like what you're doing immediately after landing. Implement your pre-drop information into your playstyle and begin looting. Okay, third, execute your loot pad. Loot quickly and efficiently while striving to get to your ideal inventory each game. And fourth, execute your first rotation, man. Like use map mobility and leave your drop on time to ensure that you get to dead side of the first zone, all right? All right, guys, so in this video, I showed you everything that you need to do to master early game and make it out of spawn every single time. So which one of these strategies do you think is the most important? Let us know in the comments below what you guys think. And if you enjoyed this video, drop a like. Don't forget to sub to the channel so you don't miss another video we got coming out. Bunch of crunch army, where you at? Keep eating that bunch of crunch and let's get this going.